The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. What? I shall not want. Wow. I don't know. I hope you don't make me lay down in that green pasture out there today. It's wet. I do it though, because like Phyllis said, we pray for rain and pray for rain and then boom. We got it. We got it. Why should we be amazed when a prayer comes to pass? My God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Interesting how the Lord will have His way. Amen. He'll make a way where there seems like there is no way. He's the way maker. Let's pray. Father, we love You so very much. We thank You, God, for loving us first, for giving us Your Son, Jesus, that we might have life. Lord, uh, Bring the scriptures to life today, Lord, the words that uh, we share, Lord, that would have power, that would go forth, Father God, and make a difference in people's lives, not just here, but everywhere we go. So, Father, uh, we love you so very much. We thank you, Lord, for everything that you just continue to bless us with, Lord. Uh, pray for the anointing here today of the Holy Spirit, Father, that, uh, that you would have your way in our lives. So, Father, uh, we humbly ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. You know, I'm... I'm, I'm, I'm constantly searching, looking, praying, whatever, about sharing things that might be relevant to uh, today. You know, that shouldn't be too hard to find something, right? Yeah. <laughs> I, I gotta tell you, uh, the Lord, uh, he, He's speaking. Have some ears to hear. He's speaking to the saints all across this, uh, not just this country, but all across the world. And uh, I got some scriptures I want to talk about in a minute, but I, I got to, I want to just, can I just talk to you for a minute here? Yeah. Um, this period of not knowing, did anybody ever go through a period of not knowing? A period of not knowing is very important in, in your life. Um, yet, yet it can be very painful. Do you know that? Um, but this is what separates the men from the boys. Okay? You ladies, I don't know what y'all do, but the men separate from the boys. But um, your ability to manage uncertainty in these times, uh, to deal with the unknown, to stand the pressure, to stand the pressure of not knowing to create an elusive, uh, here's the deal, to stand the pressure of not knowing rather than, rather than to create an elusive idea to comfort yourself with something that's just not true. And I, I want you to think about that for a minute and just that how you manage this instability will determine the next 10 years of your life. It's just, that's, that's the truth. How, how you handle how you handle not knowing. And I've been praying about that. Lord, how, how do I handle not knowing? And the Lord reminded me of something happened here 15 years ago. We moved to, to this area from South Florida. Had a, had a really cool cowboy church down there. Had rodeo ministry. All things going on. Great business. Stuff happening. And, and, and it's amazing because when we moved here, uh, folks were a few folks were asking. We were asking ourselves, what? Where are we going to do church? I mean, are we going to do church? Are we going to go to some church? What are we going to do? And, and so it's interesting because you know that if you put that out there, you get all types of opinions <laughs> on stuff like that. And uh, even 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 myself here, I I had said, well, maybe we'll do church here on the farm. You know, we can we can find a little place here. We can meet at my house. We can do all kinds of things. Get started that way. See where God takes us. 
And, and, and it's interesting because um, different people were telling us it's way out there. You got to be on a main road. Ain't nobody going to come out there in, in, the, in, in the farm to, to meet with you guys. Uh, you're, hey, you're from South Florida. Nobody from North Florida is going to accept you. And, and I'm like, what? I, I was born in Florida. Okay, well, it don't matter. Okay, you're not from North Florida. Okay, so that's fine. But um, you, you know what? We did it anyway. And, and do you know, we, we did it anyway because we didn't know. Be, because we didn't know. See, see, they had perceived some information. These people that were giving me all this negative stuff, they had perceived some information that wasn't factual. Okay? And, 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 and my benefit was, Phyllis's benefit, we didn't know we couldn't do it. So, so we did it anyway. And, and, and you, you can do more sometimes with dealing with people who don't know than people that do know. Anybody ever dealt with somebody that knew everything? You know, I, I, I say that's a, I say that it's great. I love teaching teenagers because you don't have to tell them nothing. They know everything. So, Cheyenne. That, okay. All right. Um, I, I hope you don't get this wrong, and, and I'm, I'm very want to be very careful because this is going on Facebook and YouTube, and I know my, my phone's going to be texting and ringing off the hook. But don't don't get me wrong. But sometimes your enemy is you know too much. Hello. Sometimes your enemy is you know too much. You know too much. You you bought into to too many false ideas. We buy into false ideas. Be, be, because your your brain has taken you to the conclusion, maybe to a place that God hasn't taken you. Your brain will take you to places that God does not want you to go. So tell somebody, turn to somebody, tell, tell them right now, I don't know. I, don't know. I, I want you to get in this place today, I don't know. You see, not 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 knowing it is not knowing is like a computer that's buffering. Anybody ever had that circle going round and round on, on their phone or, or, or on a computer? But not knowing it is a lot like a, a computer that is buffering, painfully, desperately attempting to connect with truth. Painfully and desperately attempting to connect with truth. The wheel turning and turning, trying to make contact. See, that, that's what the brain goes through. I've been, I've been reading a little more about Doug, and, and it, it doesn't like, the brain doesn't like instability. It doesn't like not knowing. And, and, and a sociologist, 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 social, sociologist, sociologist, no, okay, well, whatever those guys are, they, they call this intellectual closure. Okay, that's what they call it. So, so we're, we are so desperate to know, we come up with a conclusion, and guess what we do? We call it a fact. We, we, and, and, and hey, I, I've, I've got buddies that are in the ministry, and, and they come up with a conclusion, they call it a fact, they build a ministry on it, build a doctrine around it, and never move on anywhere else. Whoa. They stay right there. And you know what we call it? Doctrines of men. And, and so I, I, I had a little, we had a storm the other day here. And I don't know, things were going on, power was on, power was off. And Phyllis had her iPad out, and her iPad was searching, searching, searching. It was so desperate to connect to Wi-Fi. It was spinning and spinning and spinning. And, and guess what it did? It connected to our TV. She says, look at this. She says, she says look at this. It, it is so desperate. And, and the problem was, the connection wasn't strong enough, okay? And, and, and so, um, in, in the absence of not knowing, it was desperate just to grab onto anything that was available. Listen to me. When, when you're going, when you're gonna do great things, and, and when you're gonna do things for God, and, and we're gonna do God's stuff, Guess what? Just anything will not do. 
It, it, it will not do. You, you've got to be able to withstand not knowing. You've got to be able to withstand not knowing until you can tap into something that will hold what you're trying to build, what you're trying to accomplish, what you're trying to do. So touch somebody right now and tell them, I'm going to wait on a good signal. And I, I told Phyllis this morning, I'm going to wait on a good signal from the Lord. I'm going to wait on a good signal. I don't know how long it's going to take. I don't know how long that I've got to be, uh, that I'm going to be uncertain. But I'd rather be certain than tap into a TV, Wi-Fi, and not be strong enough to accomplish what God wants to do in my life. So, it, it's the art. I, I, I call it the art of not knowing. The art of not knowing. Do you, you know that the knowing has killed all kinds of things in, in my life? It's killed things in, in lives of people in this church. I want to tell you what, it, it's, it's, killed, it's killed marriages. Uh, you, 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 think you, you think you know what your wife needs, okay? And I, I'm going to probably step on some toes here this morning because you, you don't want to admit that, that you don't know, so you're giving them what they used to need, okay? And, and, and it's, your, it's your rule book, it's your rule book that you have put together in your life that's killing your marriage. And so I, I want to tell you, you, you know too much about them. And a lot of guys, what I see happen is they, they stop being curious. They, they stop being curious. And, and, and when, you, when, you don't know, when you don't know so much, when you back, can you remember back when you didn't so much and you were just dating and you were enjoying your wife, and you were enjoying all the things that you used to do. You were curious, you were exciting, you were investigative, you were assertive, you were engaged, but now you know too much. Okay? So, so, so I, you know what I do? I, I, I say, search me, Lord. I, I just back up and I stop and I say, search me, Lord. Boy, it's quiet in here. And now, if you guys, I know you're sitting next to your spouses now, a lot of you, and you can't, you can't say amen or can't do anything, but you can tap your toe, okay? And, 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 and I'll know. Just, just wiggle your toe. But it, it, you, you're, you're not curious anymore. Your brain has supplied all this false information. So now you know because you don't like not knowing. Okay. If we can just become comfortable, if we can become comfortable in not knowing, guess what you could do? If you can become comfortable in not knowing, you could keep growing. And that's, that's just the truth. We, we got to know how to keep growing. And that's to become comfortable in not knowing. See, it, it, it's only those that hunger and thirst. Hello? Hunger and thirst for righteousness. See, it, it, it's only those that hunger and thirst. It, it, is there anybody? Is, is there anybody in this church? Is there anybody in this church that's hungry and thirsty? Amen. Any, anybody hungry? Amen. And thirsty for just Jesus, my God. I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to challenge people this week just to be a fool again. Just be, just be a fool for Christ, and, and, and to come to. Come to the text. When you open up your Bible, come to the text with more questions than, than you do answers. Come on. Come to the text with questions. Amen. And, and quit thinking that you got all the answers. I, I walked into church this morning and like I have every morning that we've been coming here for, for 15 years. And I, 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 I'll say, I'll come in here and I'll say, I, I don't know how to do this. Lord, I, I, I don't know how to do this. Things change. Do you know that? Situations change. People change. The only thing that doesn't change is God. Amen. He says, I am God and I change it not. Amen. So I, I, I come into church this morning and I said, I don't know how to do this. And, and, and maybe there's... Lord, maybe there's a better way. Maybe there's something that I haven't thought of. I'd hate to think that, that I know how to do this. Exactly how to do this. And, and, and so, maybe maybe my rules are, are not so great. You know, maybe the things that, I, that my doctrine is not is, is not infallible. But here here I'm here to challenge you. I'm here to challenge you a little bit. I'm here to challenge the truth that you've been standing on. 
That's what I'm here to do. I'm here to challenge your truth. Your mind gets tired of buffering, so you come to a conclusion, you come to a truth, and the fact is that may, maybe somebody else could do it better than me. I mean, maybe somebody else could do a better job. Maybe, maybe just maybe, they could have taken this church to another level. They could have, Maybe somebody could take your business to another level. Maybe, hey, guess what? Maybe, just maybe, somebody else could take the Opry, turn it into multiple uh, uh, locations. I don't know that. But what we do know, but what we do know, that, that and, and, and the fact is, I, I, Phyllis reminded me of this, that she says, maybe God could have taken this woman and turned her into Wonder Woman with somebody else at the helm. And then I said, well, maybe somebody could have took this man, turned him into Superman. No way. At the helm. See, you're, you're, our, our problem is always that we know too much. Until we shatter what we know, we will not open ourselves up to the fact that what? All things are possible. All things are possible. I mean, we, we get in these mindsets that we can't do it. It can't be done. I can't do it. It's not going to happen. But look at what the Scripture says in Matthew 19, 26. It says, But Jesus looked at them and He said to them, With men, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Amen. Say that with me. With all God, all, all things, things are, are possible. possible. All things are possible. <laughs> you, 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 you can do it anywhere, anyhow. You, you, you can turn things around. No doubt about that. Jesus says, come out of what you know. Everything that you used to do. God's getting ready. God's getting ready to do some things in the people, in people's lives in this place. I just know that. I got this feeling that this is a time that, that God's bringing some folks into a, into a place where they've never been. To be challenged to accomplish some things that you haven't accomplished. Don't care how old you are. Doesn't really matter. This is a time that God's going to use all those things in your life that you have learned over the years. Put them together. And then if you think you don't know it all, guess what? He's going to promote you. That's what He's going to do. Look at the next scripture that we had. I think it was in Mark. I want to read this to you. It says here that... Uh, can you make that just a little smaller for me there? Just a little yeah. bit. Uh, there we go. They're talking about Jesus here. Then he came to Bethsaida, and they brought a blind man to him, and they begged him to touch him. So he took the blind man by the hand, and he led him out of the town. And when he had spit on his eyes, and he put his hands on him, he asked if he saw anything. And he looked up, and he said, I see men like trees walking. Then he put his hands on his eyes again, and he made them look up. And he was restored and saw everything <coughs> clearly. Then he sent him away to the house saying, Neither go into the town nor tell anyone in the town. For, for those of you that remember me using this scripture a, a couple of months ago, um, it, it, it's not that you need a second touch, so don't, don't worry about that. Do you know that you can look at a scripture and get... Every day you could look at it and get something different out of it. I mean, you could look at these parables and get a different teaching, you can get a different idea, you can get whatever. Jesus comes to Bethsaida. They bring him to a blind man, and Jesus takes him out of Bethsaida. Understand this, that blind people survive. Those of you that know blind people, they survive by knowing their environment. They survive by knowing their environment. They, they are blind people. There are blind people that live alone. There are blind people that, that do fine. There are blind people that, that cook. There are blind people that manage their homes. There are blind people that know all kinds of things because they, they know that they are ten steps from the table. They are five steps to the refrigerator. They are seven steps, seven steps to the to the couch. The, these are things. These are things that they know, 
and, 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 and as long as, as you don't move anything or take them out of their environment, they, they do just fine. <coughs> I, I, I can survive off what I know. The only problem is when I get outside of the things that I know, in fact, I, I can't even go outside. See, some of us, some of us are stuck, and this is where I want to go. Some of us are stuck in what we know. And as long as we, we keep yourself, as long as you keep yourself in that prison of what you know, you can survive just fine. You can survive just fine because you've already, you've already counted out the steps. We've already counted out the steps. We know that on the first Sunday of every month we do covered dish. We know exactly how we do worship every week. Time, day in, week in and week out. We, we know exactly how we're going to have a men's breakfast every Saturday morning. We know exactly how we're going to do it. We know exactly we're going to eat the same thing all the time. We know exactly what we're going to do all the time. We know that we're going to start with prayer. We're going to be praised. We're going to have a sermon. There's going to be an altar call. You've already marked off the steps. I've already marked off all the steps and everything that we're doing here in this church. And guess what? Nobody knows that we're blind. No, nobody knows that you're blind because you don't need a vision. Because you've got a tradition. That's what the Lord told me. The Lord said that you, you don't need a vision anymore, Norm. You've got a tradition. And I am so I'm I'm so upset about this. I want to tell you what. So so when they brought the blind man to Jesus, Jesus took him by the hand, and guess what he did? He took him out of his tradition. He took him out of his tradition. You, you, you may have to get out of where you are. There may not be any excitement there anymore. The expectation, no expectation here, no no relief here. No, guess what? It turns into where there'll be no power there either. And so is there anybody, is there anybody here willing to go somewhere fresh? That's what I want to know. I want to go somewhere fresh. I want it to be all new every day. Amen. Ready to take it. Ready to take it. Lord, I'm ready to take it to the next level. And I think the people in here are too. You, you, you got to get ready to leave. You, you've, been, you've been in Bethsaida long enough. That's it. And, and you've stayed in Bethsaida long enough. And, and aren't you tired of the same old whatever? I mean, that's that's the truth. I mean, oh my God, Jesus, you, you, you carried me out of out of my comfort zone. <coughs> Jesus will take you out of your comfort zone, and it'll take you where it's not familiar anymore. I'm buffering, trying to find something familiar, trying to find something familiar. Listen, out of everything you used to do that was normal to you. God's getting ready to change the game. For some folks in here that will receive this message, God's getting ready to change your game. And, and so they, they, they took him by the hand. Can you imagine never being blind and being in a new place? You're, you're blind and, and you're in a new place. You're, 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 you're in new territory. I, oh, oh, you didn't know that rock was there. You, you didn't know that, that pothole. You didn't know that pothole was there. Jesus said, you, I'm carrying you out of your comfort zone where it's not familiar. Coming out of where everything used to be. Jesus let him out. He spat in his eye and said, what do you see? And he said, I see something. I, I, I see something. Some of you, some of you in this place, I know without a shadow of a doubt that you're starting to see something. That you're starting to see things a little bit differently. A little bit of light peeking through the darkness. Maybe I can do something, you're thinking. Maybe I can do something different. Maybe I can do it better. Maybe I can do it in a different way. Maybe, maybe I can see, maybe my marriage can be, a, I can add some excitement to that. Maybe I don't know everything. Listen, I, I, I'm not where I ought to be, but thank God, none of us are where we used to be. We, we wouldn't be here now. So I, I, Jesus brings him out. Jesus brings him out. Why does he bring him out? He brings him out to get his miracle. Hello? <laughs> he brings him out to get his miracle. 
that he never could have gotten in Bethsaida. There, there are no miracles in the familiar. I'm telling you that. I'm going out on a limb here. I'm going to tell you there are no miracles in the familiar. There are no miracles in the safe places. There are no miracles in what you know and what you think you know. I, I'm going to tell you what. If you ain't scared, you ain't living. That's just, that's just the truth. If, 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 if you're not tripping over stuff and you're not stepping in potholes, you, you ain't doing anything. You especially ain't doing anything new. And you're not covering any new ground. You don't have any new ideas. That's why God brought you here today. To lead you out of Bethsaida. To take you out of your old place that you've been. In your mind. And in your thoughts. And, in, and, and maybe maybe in your faith walk. Maybe we, need to, maybe we need to be cranked up and need something new. Nothing's going to happen in your familiar. God, God's waiting. God's waiting for you. And where does He wait for us? He waits for us in that scary place. In that place that we've never been. In that new territory. I, I, I want to pray for folks today that, that believe that there's more to you, that there's more inside of you than, than what has been expressed. I want to pray for folks like that today. I, I want to pray for folks that are asking, Lord, when? When, Lord? Why, Lord? How, Lord? I don't know how. But, Lord, I, I know you know. There are people who, who, who I want right now. You want to come forward, fine. You want to stand where you are, it doesn't matter. Because I'm, I'm not going to beg you, I'm not going to plead you, and I am not going to coach you. I only want folks that want to come out of Bethsaida. I only want folks that want to come out of where they are right now. And they want to be fresh. And they want something new. And they want something exciting. When, 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 and when you lift your hands up to pray, you know what? It's a sign that you're surrendering what you told yourself that you can receive. Surrendering what you told yourself that you could receive what God has for you. Pray with me. Say, Lord, I give up my way. I give up my way of leading. I give up my way of handling situations. I will relinquish all. I do not want to die in Bethsaida. Right now, right now, I'm going to do this. I'm going to come against the enemy. I'm going to come against every voice that is inside of you that hasn't, that hasn't, that has been planted to limit your growth. Lord, I come against every every voice inside of these folks that has been planted to limit their growth, to stop their creativity. All the things, Father God, that go back to their childhood, Lord, that limit the things that God wants to do in their life, I come against them and I bind them in the name of Jesus. Breaking every curse, breaking the feeling of unworthiness, we ask this, Father God, by the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, our Lord and Savior. Father God, we're looking for a fresh new start, Lord. Father, the, the doctrines of men, the things that we think we know, Lord, I pray that you flush them out right now in the name of Jesus. Make us brand new, Father God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Cheyenne, would you come on up here? All right. I'm going to take Jace. Come on. Hallelujah. 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 Blessings, my friend.
Norm, you uh, you really hit the nail on the head today. I tell you what, you're doing a good job. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. I hit the nail on my head. <laughs> no, I, I, I don't feel like I feel like I've not totally confessed today. I, like I was saying before about believing and putting things in God's hands, and I'll be honest with you, I don't think that 90% of the time I'm in I'm in this calling. I feel like I'm. Uh, I know some of you folks out there probably don't believe the word luck. I like that word because it irritates religious people. And, uh, you know, last week me and my wife got blessed with a couple of nights at a very nice little bungalow on the beach. And I'm so used to my daily walk, everything I do every day, I don't feel like I have God's uh, blessing in my life or the, His luck. When I'm outside doing stuff that I know my calling is not in that department. Everything always goes wrong. Everything. All day long I'm fighting. And we went to this thing and, and uh, I, I somehow just assumed that that luck thing would follow me. It felt weird because God was blessing us like crazy. In every which way. I had I felt his anointing and his peace and and uh, that's what I pray for myself because I really don't know how to get over that. I just don't. Uh, I, I, I promised the Lord many years ago I was going to leave all that behind. And uh, for some reason, I just keep going back in there again. So pray for me and help me get out of that, that stuff. Because I know my calling is something else besides the body work and working on trees and whatever else I, I run to. I just don't understand why people do this not, and why do I do it? The Bible's full of people that ran away from him. the prodigal son. What was he doing? He was eating. He was shoveling new manure, eating garbage. And all he had to do was go back. That's it. And he had everything when he went back. What was, what was keeping him in that barn, in that thing? It was just pride. I don't know. Come to the place. I come to pray. Take all my word. Oh, there's a peace inside my soul that's gonna give out of control. To the cross with all my shame, I left you to die for what was all. All I have is pride, too low to fall. Lord, help me take my hand. In a world I don't feel the place where I can't stand is everything I do. Out of the road. 
Lord help me take my hand in a world I don't feel good plan I can't speak everything I do is sin Everything I do Amen. Amen. 